I'm Mike Schlexer here for the Port Townsend 14th Annual Port Townsend Film Festival. I am with KPTZ 91.9 FM, and I'll be interviewing Patrick Moot, filmmaker of Unhung Hero. Hi, Patrick. How are you today? Good. How are you? Thank I'm you great. for uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. Can you tell us about for those of us who haven't seen? I recently watched your movie, but for the people who have not seen your movie, can you tell us about it? Uh, yeah, it is a feature-like documentary uh, where myself and the director, uh, Brian Spitz, who actually couldn't be here this weekend, um, and he's very bummed about that, um, made a documentary questioning whether or not size matters. In particular, male's genital size, and in more particular, my genital size. So we kind of went through a process. Um, you know, we started with the question of, you know, what does size matter? What does this mean? And I had my own personal insecurities about my, the size of my penis because I had been told that potentially it was a little too small. Um, and so we just uh, started trying to not only answer the question, but then also see if there was a way that I personally could make, uh, increase my size. Because there's all these things out there, and you hear about them, and see them everywhere, pumps and pills and, and uh, all these things. And, and we, I had never really considered using them. Obviously, in the back of my head, I thought, like, if those work, I'm definitely going to give it a try. But I just didn't know. So that was part of the film was, was going out and seeing what these things um, really, it, what, what the benefits really are. And just, you know, kind of really trying to find out if size does matter, if it is a thing, if, if you know, having a bigger penis is going to give you any benefits with, you know, the opposite sex, or if it changes your personality, or if, you know, physically it is a thing that, you know, a, a bigger penis is better, and so that that's basically what we started with, and then we just kind of went from there. And you start, first you started locally, mm -hmm. you went to some of the sex shops, you went to, uh, you ordered some of the male enhancement pills and uh, various products that are out there. Yep. And uh, you gobbled them down like jelly beans. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I did gobble them down. I did, um, I think when we first started, the regiment that I was on was the pills. Um, Extends in particular was the one that I was using. Um, using the pumps, the penis pumps, and a process called jelking which is basically physically pulling and stretching um, your penis to try and increase the length. So that was, that was my regimen through the beginning of the film, and it was all the local stuff, like things that you can get and do within the United States. Um, and uh, yeah, it was interesting. It was, uh, it was a lot of work. <laughs> I had like, my day was planned out based on just all of these different things. And I found out that probably doing some of these things together at the same time, like a combination of joking and, um, and pumps are probably not the best thing for your penis. It can be, it, they can actually do damage. I mean, and granted, both of them can do damage. Everyone that I talked to, the guy who, who kind of um, has been spearheading the joking movement, um, he has, he claims to have increased himself by about, I think, an inch and a quarter, an inch and three quarters, but it's a lot of work. You have to be very, very committed to it and you have to do. And I think that's probably where I, where, where I started to waver a little bit was I wanted more, you know, kind of like quick fix type things. And so I, I did them for a while, but it wasn't really seeing the results. And, and it, was, it was becoming uncomfortable for me, which I have a low threshold for pain. So I think if you, I think if you really, if you really want it and do it right, you can, you can make these things work, but you have to do them in a way that isn't going to hurt yourself. And when you get uncomfortable, you know, stop and... So, um, but yeah, those were the local things that, that we were looking into while we were here. And you had medical advice mm -hmm. while you were doing it, uh, yep. which actually advised you that the more physical means, the penis pump and the gel king mm -hmm. and uh, some of the other stretchers, I'll call them, yes. uh, could end up causing internal scarring in your penis. Yes, they could. That was, um, it was funny because we'd been and we'd talked to a lot of different people and I think with a lot of... Uh, you know, in different medical fields and things like that. There are differing opinions on certain things. So we talked to some doctors who said, yes, absolutely, the penis is a muscle. And then talked to another uh, sexologist named Carol Queen who really, really knows what she's talking about. And she said the penis is absolutely not a muscle. So it doesn't work the same way. It's not like working out where you can break down the muscles and then they build back and grow stronger. The penis has muscles. It has, you know, several different muscles that kind of go throughout. But the actual 
tissue that is is involved in in you know creating an erection is is not a muscle. It's a uh, you know it's about as much a muscle as your earlobe. It's a different kind of fleshy tissue that fills that, that can fill with blood and then detracts when it's not full of blood. So I mean it just um, it was interesting talking to, to different doctors and actually hearing like literally like yes it is no it's not and I think it's just a matter of you know I, I think there's truth to both. Um, but I would say, in general, that the, the actual, like, the penis is actually not a muscle. It has all kinds of muscles, but the, but the part that you would want to make bigger isn't necessarily, um, isn't necessarily a muscle. And so, having tried locally, trying the various things, and uh, the results are actually negative results, mm -hmm. uh, you went international. Yes. You went global, and you started checking out other uh, means of enlargement, mm -hmm. you looked at surgery, you looked at injection, yep. can you talk about that? Uh, yes, I can talk about that. Those were a little more on the extreme side. Um, I mean, the injections were in Papua New Guinea, and there's, you know, if you've never been to Papua New Guinea, it's um, developmentally fairly far behind the rest of the world, which is actually what makes it so amazing and beautiful, too, it's just that the, it, it feels like you know, like it's it's still it's still getting to where the rest of the world is now, but there's there's a very nice quality to that. But they did there was a procedure that they did there that they do not do. It's actually illegal, and they don't do it at uh, like hospitals and facilities like that. We met a guy who basically did it out of the back of his van, um, and you take ten shots. Each one is about fifty milliliters, I think, or, or I can't remember what the exact breakdown is. But they do ten shots, and so there's like you know, three on the side, three on the other side, three on the bottom, and then one or two on the top. And they and that's for each procedure. And usually some of the guys we talked to had done maybe 10 procedures like that, something like that. So they did a lot. There was, there was a point, I was really interested in it because everyone I talked to was like, yeah, it works, it's perfect, and there's no side effects. But then again, they'd only been doing it for about six months. So, you know, then if your penis falls off in a year, there's the information that, you know, the, there, there's the negative side of it. So I was interested in that, but it got to a point where we brought the guy back to the room that we were staying in, in this small hotel, and it became very obvious very fast that this probably wasn't the most sanitary way to go about it. And in that moment, actually, the director kind of had to rein me in. You can hear him behind the camera going like, pat, pat, like, mm, go take a break, go take a break. Because you can tell I was like sweating and like pale. And uh, I don't like needles either, so that one didn't, it, it, it didn't work for me. Granted, there was a, one of the guys who's in the room when we were shooting had had it done multiple times. He was like, I love it. It's great, you know? And they basically just inject the palm oil underneath the skin to give it more girth, basically. Um, so it's palm oil. It is palm oil. wondering what it was. Yes, it is palm oil. And he poured it out of a Coke bottle. Um, and that was when the red flags started to go off. Oh, yeah. They probably should have started going off way before that, but... When you said you were, you thought the food was iffy. Yeah, it's like, I'm, that's the thing, too. It was like, we got outside, and I was talking to the director, and kind of, like, citing really quick, like, what are we going to do? Do we send them? Do I do it? And, uh, I mean, it was just one of those moments where I was like, and I was. It was like, I'm afraid to eat the food and, and drink what, like, I'll, when I get a drink, I don't put ice in it, you know? Like, there's no... The idea that then I would do something like this, which is a procedure that should obviously be done in a sterile environment, um, it was just like, yeah, I can't, I can't do it. Um, and then the surgery was in South Korea, and the surgery was done in a, I mean, plastic surgery is huge in South Korea. It's a big thing. Everybody gets at least some of it done. I mean, it was almost like, like the fast food equivalent of, because it was like these, there was just rows of these surgery centers and you go in and you flip through a book and you find something and you point at it and you don't even necessarily need a like a, an appointment and then they take you back and then they do the procedure and they send you on your way. Um, this one particular doctor came up, his name is Dr. Lee, he came up with a, with a procedure where they either take fat from the lower abdomen from you or if you don't want the scar they can also take it from a cadaver and then they, uh, he, he cuts open the first layer of skin on the penis and then they tuck the fat underneath it and stitch it back closed. So it gives it more girth, but that was one where, honestly, that was probably the most legitimate and, um, and really like, you know, proven to work option. For some reason I decided, to, I asked if I could watch the procedure before I did it. 
And if you're ever going to have a surgery done, don't watch it first. Because, like, if you ever wondered why your mouth hurts after, like, your jaw hurts after you get your tonsils taken out or something like that, it's because you have people cramming their hands in your mouth, like, cranking your jaw up. And, and I mean, this guy was, like, tied down. He was obviously under, but he was tied down, and his hands would shake every once in a while a little bit. And once they started actually cutting and flipping the skin, I had to vomit. It was... Um, That's when you left the room that in a hurry. Is, yes, that is when I left the room in a hurry and then threw up over my lav mic, which made the sound guy just absolutely lose it because he was just like right in his ears through the cans hearing me vomit. So then he started yeah, vomiting. Join you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he vomits a lot louder than I do. Uh, I, I'm like very dainty and polite. He's like a dragon trying to get something out of his throat. Um, but that was, yeah, after we saw that too, it just, you know, I, I think after seeing so many things and having them not be what I wanted them to be and being a little disappointed after that, I was kind of hit my wall, I suppose you could say, in terms of what I was willing to do and whether or not I even wanted to do it at all. You seemed exhausted at that point. Oh, I was done. I was done. And you can ask Brian, the director. I mean, like, there's one point where I'm kind of quitting, and, and we and we did we got into a few arguments towards the end because it was tough, and it was like, look, I realize that we've come this far, but what you need to realize is that I might be just destroying any sort of credibility that I have or just embarrassment. Like, I feel like I'm embarrassing myself. What if people don't get it? What if this ends up like a 90-minute penis joke that I am the butt of? Like, I don't want that. That's not... You know, that isn't why I, why I started trying to do this in the first place, necessarily. Even though when we started, I didn't really know what we were doing. I just knew that we found people who were interested in the idea of, of us making a documentary where I kind of became like a guinea pig, and, and we were going to, you know, find these answers. At, at that point, I really started to hit the wall in terms of what I was willing to deal with and what I wanted to do, and whether or not I was even interested in having this out there at all. Um, and I was, I was very tired, but then I talked to my mom, talked to my brother, talked to some other people, and they were like, look, you've come this far. The director's a very good friend of mine, so I knew he wasn't gonna, you know, cut it in a way that was gonna make me look any less than authentic or, or who I am. And so then it was just a matter of getting back in and finding a way to finish it, and we did. And I feel like what we ended with was, was, so much, was about so much more than penis size. It was about embracing your insecurities and being yourself and people who, you know, I mean, one of the biggest, Support, some of the biggest supporters we have of the film right now are in the gay and lesbian community because I think they identify with just the feeling of being, you know, like ostracized for reasons that you don't have control of or having these, you know, like feeling like you're being put under scrutiny and you didn't do anything. You're just being yourself. And, and for me, that's what I took away with it. It mm -hmm. was you were crushed at the beginning of the film. Mm -hmm. It seemed like the journey was a reaction to that refusal of your proposal. Mm -hmm. And by the end, in with that exhaustion and that long journey, you did seem to come to an acceptance and just say, look, this is mm -hmm. not for me. Yeah. At first I was exploring, seeing what was there, and mm -hmm. it seemed like, as you said, it became more of a, a personal journey. Mm -hmm. It absolutely did, and I'm very happy with, with, where, with, with where it ended at, because now, and I've told people this before, like I truly believe that if you're the first one to really embrace your insecurities, the things about yourself that you don't like, that you would change if you could, or that you feel like people judge you on. If you're the first one to be like, I don't like this about me, but I don't care. It's me, this is who I am, this is who I'm gonna be. It takes the arsenal away from people who might use those things to throw them in your face. So now if somebody's like, hey man, you've got a little penis, I'll be like, yeah, I made a movie about it, dumbass. Like, this is my, that's my joke, that's my thing. That's, you know, I've embraced it fully now, so it's okay. I don't feel uncomfortable talking about it or, or anything. It's just, uh, you know, it's something that I've accepted about myself and moved on, and I'm a much happier person now because of it. Patrick Moon, yes. Unhung Hero. Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. I'm Mike Schlexer, KPTZ 91.9 FM for the Port Townsend Film Festival. Thank you so much. Thanks.